Good day fellow investors, what's better than to start the year with a Berkshire stock analysis? Berkshire is a great business, but is it a great investment now? Let's discuss. I love discussing Berkshire because it's the lighthouse of investing, it's Warren Buffett, and there is always something to learn. If not investing in Berkshire, then comparing it to other opportunities, because Berkshire is one of the best businesses out there. And it is one of the best businesses out there because it has 123 billion in cash on its balance sheet. And that is a staggering number and that shows the quality of it and it can't go bust. Investing is about compounding, growing your capital, your wealth. And if you go bust, you're back to zero, even lower, so you have nothing which means value investing, don't lose money, which allows for compounding, and those are the businesses you want to invest in. And if we look at the quality of the business, we have the railroad, utilities, service manufacturing, and a lot of insurance that leads to float, other businesses, Duracell, and many of these brands are likely very known to you. And then we also have the stock market portfolio where we have Coca-Cola, Apple, American Express, Moody's, Bank of America, and other companies that Berkshire owns in part. And they own businesses that have cash flows, Hopefully those will grow over time. And that has been the strategy since ever, buying these great businesses, compounding, reinvesting the cash flows. And that is what Warren Buffett did greatly over the last 50 years. If we take a look at Berkshire's stock price, you must keep in mind that Warren Buffett acquired the majority of it. He started buying at seven, but he acquired the majority of it at $14.86. Now the stock price is $468,000. That is an increase of 25,000 times. That's something incredible and really remarkable. So the next time you buy a coffee or treat someone and pay 14 bucks, you might want to think about this number, how much 14 bucks could be over time if you compound. So great businesses, everything great, financial fortress, unlikely to go bust if you go to the S&P 500 and look at the businesses that will certainly be there in 20, 30 years, one of the few is Berkshire Hathaway. But is being a great business enough to be a great investment? Because if we look at what Buffett says, he says, yes, it's better to buy a wonderful company, but many forget about the fair price when it comes. Not bad price, but the fair price. That is the focus. And to get to the fair price, we have to look at earnings, make a valuation, and then see what is a fair price of Berkshire for us. If I look at the earnings, I see that Berkshire approximately makes around 7 billion per quarter. That leads to around 28 billion per year in, we can call it free cash flow that Warren Buffett can then reinvest, keep in cash, buy other stocks, Occidental Petroleum, Chevron, whatever, and compound over the long term. This number 28 billion has been pretty stable over the last few years. It will likely grow alongside the economy in the future. So it's a good number to start, but there is always the stock market portfolio too. And there are the hidden earnings. Let me give you an example that will help you understand Berkshire better. Berkshire owns 5.6% of Apple. Apple makes 100 billion, thus 5.6 billion should be Berkshire's earnings. But only the dividend that Berkshire gets is accounted for, and that is 820 million. The rest Apple uses for buybacks, for whatever, of course, that should be reflected in the stock price, but also Warren Buffett prefers to calculate these hidden earnings to calculate the true earnings of Berkshire because there is 4.6 billion that is not accounted into Berkshire's earnings. 
And if you just type Berkshire's owner's manual or principles, and there you go to January 1999, 15 principles. And here, number six, you have the accounting principles that you can dig deeper how Warren Buffett approaches these hidden earnings. Let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a review of these 15 principles that some have been added to the original 14 and then we can make a nice video about it. That's always interesting and always something to learn then. Let me know in the comments. Now we have 28 billion. I added up Coca-Cola and all the other companies, American Express that don't pay everything into a dividend. So we are around 46 billion of value creation per year. And let's now go to our valuation table. You can download it for free on my free stock market investment course. The link is in the description below. And here I have put Berkshire's income, 36 billion, the profits that it makes. It doesn't pay out dividends, so I'm not calculating the present value of the earnings because those earnings are reinvested for growth in the future. And let's say that Berkshire grows 6% per year, Warren and Charlie's target is 8 to 10%, but let's say a recession, something goes wrong, an insurance catastrophe or something. If I expect a 10% return on investment, a 10% discount rate here, then I get with the P ratio of 15 in 2032, I get to an intrinsic value of $351 billion. You compare that to the market capitalization and you can see how for a 10% return, Berkshire is extremely overvalued. If I change this expected return to 6% or even 5%, then we are closer to an intrinsic value of the current market capitalization. But if I expect higher returns, then we are far from affordable investing. If we really push it to 8% growth rate and we add the terminal multiple of 25% down the road, then yes, then it justifies the current market valuation. In the worst case scenario, 5% growth and let's say a 10 PE ratio, then we can go down to 200 billion in valuation. Of course, you can add the 100 billion in cash, so 300, but just to give an overview on what could Berkshire's valuation be. If I go back to my comparative table, you can see here that I expect a return much below 10%, thus the ratio is below one, which means I would not invest in Berkshire now. For those interested more into this template, you can watch this video and you can see how I get to that intrinsic valuation. And it's a nice tool to have in your investment toolkit to understand better what are the risks and rewards and likely outcomes of your investments. Now, when it comes to investing and me owning Berkshire, it's very, very unlikely, despite the fact that I love Buffett, Munger, Berkshire is one of the best businesses out there, financial forklift, it's very unlikely that I will invest in it significant amounts of money. And the first thing is that if we look at the historical P ratio, don't look at it after the accounting change. So it has been between 10 and 20. Now it is closer to 20, as we said, exuberant. So you would say, Sven, yes, if Berkshire hits a P ratio of 10, you would invest in it. You would load up the truck. Well, if Berkshire hits a P ratio of 10, like it was the case in May of 2020, when I made this video about it, so discussed it, told you 10% risk returns expected, then you would say, Sven, then you would load up the truck. Well, I don't think so, because in this crazy times here, there might be other opportunities. Berkshire didn't even double since a stock that I bought here did much, much more. So went from seven, I think was the low 11 to 50. So those are the cyclicals, the copper, the this, the that, that might do much, much better for if you know what you're doing, same or even less risk. 
So unfortunately, I don't know whether I will invest in Berkshire soon. There is, however, one chance, one situation where I think I could do that. And that is when everyone starts hating Warren Buffett because he underperformed for some period of time, despite having 100 billion on cash sitting doing nothing. So when you see these titles, Warren Buffett lost his touch, it did really, really bad, then it is the time to really look at Berkshire, the P ratio will likely be around 10, and then you can make a good long-term investment, especially if it is like in 1998, where people sold Berkshire to buy the internet stocks, and when the market peaked in 2000, I think it was the 1st of January 2000, here the market peaked, Berkshire was down significantly, and as the S&P 500 crashed 50% from January 2000 to 2002, Berkshire was up 38%. That is something remarkable. That's a very special situation, but absolute investing, this is for me. Whenever there is a recession, when people start hating Warren Buffett or something like that, that's the best time to buy. Where people love Berkshire, when they look for safety, Warren Buffett, etc., it is expensive. So this is all you should know about Berkshire. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.